Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. DJ Lagway puts on one of the more impressive true freshman quarterback performances that we've seen in a really long time, not only for this Florida program, but really in the landscape of college football, 18 to 25, 456 yards, three touchdowns. Now, the conversation is, should he be the starting quarterback moving forward for this Florida program? You're going to get some people that say, well, yeah, he put up those numbers uh, against Samford. And although that that's a, a fair criticism to make, you turn on the film and you watch the throws that DJ Lagway made, those throws play against any defense that you're going to see in the country. I mean, you truly got to understand why DJ Lagway was the number one quarterback in that 2024 class, the arm talent, the athleticism, the ability to make any throw on the football field. It was clearly on display against Sanford. If DJ Lagway makes those kind of throws consistently, there's just not many defenses that are going to be able to deal with what DJ Lagway brings. Now, I think the bigger question is, can the rest of the Florida offense operate like this? against top teams in the SEC. We're going to find that out. Now the conversation is, should DJ Lagway be the guy heading into Texas A&M? Now, I made a pros and cons list in terms of having this discussion. That's what you're supposed to do. It's what my pops told me to do every time I got a hard decision. Pros and cons. I'm looking at my note sheet right now. <laughs> There's a lot more pros than there are cons on this note sheet. want to get into why I personally think DJ Lagway should be the guy for Florida going forward. I also want to have a little bit of a conversation of what we saw from DJ Lagway on Saturday night as well. Before we get into it, as always, the Florida fans, one, you know, we've talked a lot about DJ Lagway for really the last 12 months. I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section. I'm on Twitter. I'm on the message boards. I get there's a lot of different feelings about DJ Lagway. Let it fly in the comment section. Of course, if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get into this one and let's start with the pros and cons. And then we'll talk about what we saw from DJ Lagway on Saturday night. Watch the back a couple of times and look, there's a lot more than just the arm talent that DJ Lagway brings. Now, the arm talent is what stands out the most. I mean, some of those throws, there's maybe 1% of quarterbacks in the country that can make some of those throws specifically working vertically down the field. We're going to get into what we saw because I think there were some other things that you saw that you really liked and some things obviously to clean up as well. Let's get into the pros. And I think the first pro, and I think the most important pro, and everybody wants to talk about what you saw from specifically DJ Lagway. I think the biggest pro is this team played better with DJ Lagway at quarterback. This offense was a little bit more unlocked. DJ Lagway brings elements to this offense that lets his playmakers around him play a little bit better. That's one of the most important conversations when you're talking about who should be the starting quarterback is not only what the quarterback brings to the offense, but I think more importantly, like what do the guys around him look like? Is the quarterback bringing out the best of the teammates around him? You can't argue that there was a little bit more juice. Everybody seemed to play a little bit better with DJ Lagway at the helm. I think that matters. That's one of the biggest question marks you have for a freshman quarterback is he's able to come on the field and kind of lead an offense. DJ Lagway has, and the, the, the broadcaster said it when I was watching the film uh, on Sunday morning, he's got that it factor about him. Like guys just, they seem to want to play for him. They seem to play better when he's on the football field. It's hard to quantify what that it factor looks like, but I think DJ Lagway has it. And I think that's one of the things that makes you want to rock with DJ Lagway the rest of the year. He doesn't look like a true freshman. Yeah, he made some freshman mistakes, no doubt about it. But there are certain things that he brings to the table, not only from a physical standpoint, but from like a mentality that seems like Florida just played cleaner and better football and was more, definitely more explosive with DJ Lagway as the starting quarterback. I think secondly, this run game is going to be much better. When you have a quarterback that is a legitimate threat to keep the football and hurt an opposing defense, there's more space getting created for your running backs. You look at linebackers consistently keying in on DJ Lag when some of those read options. You look at edge rushers not being able to crash because of that read option. When Graham Mertz is your quarterback, there's no defense in the country that is worried about Graham Mertz keeping the football. And so they're really keen on the running back in that run game. When you have a quarterback, I, as a Michigan fan, we kind of had a very similar experience. And look, DJ Lag was probably a better athlete and runner because he's bigger than J.J. McCarthy. But when J.J. McCarthy was in and he took over the reins of this Michigan offense, 
having that presence of a quarterback that can keep it on a read option, it creates that extra space in your running game. And when you give Montreal Johnson some of that extra space, you're going to see him have a little bit more success. So I think it opens up a lot more options in terms of how you want to run the football, which is something really important to this Florida offense. I think number three, and I think quite frankly, another really important conversation, he's the better option for this offense in terms of what Florida has. They have some wide receivers that can work vertically down the field. They want to be explosive. DJ Lagway by far throws a better deep ball than what Graham Mertz does. And our biggest concern with Graham Mertz heading into this year and what we wanted to see more of is attacking the deeper third. And DJ Lagway comes in and we are immediately getting the football down to the deeper third. DJ Lagway was four of six, pushing the ball 20 plus yards down the field for 198 yards. And I think secondly, we know we have question marks about the offensive line. And those question marks are probably not going away. That's part of the reason why I'm so frustrated with Billy Napier's. We're in year three and we still have an offensive line that in pass protection is a liability. What quarterback do you want back there if you have an offensive line that's struggling? You want a quarterback that can extend plays and get outside the pocket. DJ Lagway is better suited for the personnel that Florida has on offense. And I think finally, look, there, after that loss to Miami, there, there's just not a lot of juice around this Florida program. A lot of Florida fans are pissed off, and rightfully so, about Billy Napier and what year three looks like so far. When DJ Lagwin went out there and threw for 456 yards, there was juice around the program again. And so if you're Florida and you're making the decision, you got Texas A&M at home this weekend, the crowd is going to be much more into this football game. And I think the country is going to be much more into this football game if DJ Lagway is your quarterback. Yeah, he'll go through some freshman growing pains. There's no question about that. But he's going to be a lot more exciting to watch because he can do some things that a lot of quarterbacks can't. And so you look at the pros, and I think finally, if you're Billy Napier selfishly, I probably think it's the only chance you're keeping your job going into 2025. And I'm not saying he should make that decision based on that. But if you go 5-7 and seven or 4-8 and eight with Graham Merch just playing average football, you ain't the coach in 2025. If you go seven and five with DJ Lagway showing some real juice, there's probably a chance. And I know for Florida fans, that might be a con because I know a lot of a lot of Florida fans are kind of done with Billy Napier. For Billy Napier, I don't think you should make that decision based on that. But it is really the only opportunity that I see that Florida really gains some momentum heading into 2025. And I think uh, lastly... I'm kind of a fan of throwing freshman quarterbacks into the fire. Like what is the, one of the biggest problems we saw with DJ Lagway on Saturday night was it was a lot of staring down wide receivers. It wasn't a ton of going through your progressions. How is he going to get better at that? He's going to get better at that when he gets the opportunity to do it with the live bullets flying on Saturdays in the fall. And so if you want DJ Lagway to develop as a quarterback and be a quarterback that in 2025 has the chance to be one of the best quarterbacks in the country, let him continue to develop. And I think all Florida fans know there are going to be some growing pains that are involved with that. But if you want the best DJ Lagway in 2025, I personally think it's getting him a lot more game reps. And I just think he showed you that he might run the offense better than Graham Mertz. At least I think you should give him the opportunity to show that he might run the offense better than Graham Mertz against a very quality defense in Texas A&M. Now, the only con that I have on my list is you are going to throw DJ Lagway out there against what I think is one of the best pass rushes in the country with the Florida offensive line that I don't feel confident can block up Texas A&M. And so if you do throw DJ Lagway out there, it could get ugly in terms of pass protection, keeping him upright and keeping him healthy. That's really the only con. But I think DJ Lagway, with the athleticism he showed, I think you're willing to probably look past some of those cons because of what he can do as an athlete what he can do extending the play, and the overall juice he brings to the offense. So the way I look at it, there's so many more pros to seeing what DJ Lagway can bring you as opposed to the cons of, yeah, we're a little bit concerned about our offensive line protecting DJ Lagway. Going into what we saw, the deep ball stuff is next level. It, there, again, there's not many. It's not only he can throw it a million yards. like We saw that with Joe Millen at Tennessee last year, but he couldn't hit the broad side of a barn at times. DJ Lagway threw for a 70% completion percentage his senior year of high school. The narrative around DJ Lagway before his senior year was really, really traitsy quarterback. That's not super consistent. You are, excuse me, starting to see 
a little bit more consistency with the accuracy. And you saw that when he was attacking the deeper third. And you got wide receivers that can work vertically down the field. And DJ Lagway was throwing, for lack of better term, absolute dots attacking down the field. This was the biggest bugaboo for the Florida offense in 2023. DJ Lagway did it in his first career start against Samford. And so his ability to attack the deeper third and manufacture explosive plays for an offense that's been so stale and hasn't been able to create explosive plays specifically in the passing attack, that's massive. I thought he managed the pocket really well too. I, I get the conversation, the highlights or all the throws that he made down the field. For a freshman quarterback with the athleticism that he has, you see a lot of freshmen like DJ Lagway who want to just run outside the pocket, play a little bit of you know backyard football and use that athleticism, stuff they were used to doing in high school and could do in high school. You saw at times DJ Lagway maybe trying to do a little too much at times, but I thought on a majority of these throws, I and mean, he's stepping into the pocket, he's keeping his eyes down the field. Those are things that you don't normally see from true freshmen. I thought you saw from DJ Lagway. He was really good when he was blitzed, and Sanford only blitzed him five times. He was four or five for 103 yards. So showing that ability to, hey, when I'm hot, I know where I have to go with the football, and I'm getting the football out of my hands quickly. I think that was another really big plus. Um, the only negative that I think a lot of Florida fans saw, and I certainly would agree with this, is there wasn't a lot of processing. Like You can tell when you go back and watch that game – it was a lot of first reads. You want to see him be able to go, hey, that's my first read, not there. Where's my second read? Third read, I'm getting outside the pocket, trying to give my my wide receivers some chance to get open. It was a lot of first read throws, which is okay. There's been a lot of good quarterbacks. You go to C.J. Stroud, that was his biggest knock coming out of college. And C.J. Stroud's doing just fine in the NFL. If your guys are open, which they were, you throw to your first read. And so, yeah, you can be a little critical because you didn't see as much processing as you would like. But at the end of the day, he was 18 to 25, didn't throw an interception. So I don't think it would necessarily was this glaring problem that some people might be making it out to see. I think you want to see it against Texas A&M because you're probably not going to have wide receivers that are winning every single rep. So you might have to, hey, my first read's not there. I'm looking for my second read. And then I'm checking the football down or using my legs to make a positive play. You want to see that. I, my personal take is give him the opportunity to go do that against Texas A&M. When you look at the overall conversation, one, DJ Lag was the future, and you want to lean into that. If this Florida team, I think a lot of Florida fans understand this is a not a national championship, SEC championship caliber team. I think it very well. When you have a quarterback like DJ Lagway, and if he kind of develops and becomes what a lot of us think he can be, in 2025, this is a team that can be dangerous, assuming they fix some other things as well, which you can do in the transfer portal. But I think you know you have a quarterback that gives you the chance to win really at the highest level of football. Yes, there are a lot of things around this, around DJ Lagway and within this program that need to be fixed, but at least you got the biggest piece of the puzzle, the most important piece of the puzzle. And so if I'm Florida, I'm leaning into it and saying, hey, let's see what DJ Lagway can do. Let's continue to try to build around DJ Lagway. I think it might be the chance you keep him too. Cause I think one of the conversations you might have is, and I guess it, it's a conversation. Cause if, if he just comes out, doesn't play well against Texas a and you bench him and Billy Napier gets fired, it might be hard to keep him out of the transfer portal after this year. But if he comes out and kind of shows you that he can win some football games and this team goes seven and five, regardless of Billy Napier's here or not in 2025, DJ Lagway might be. And he said in the post game, like, yeah, I came here for Billy Napier, but I also came here because I love Florida. And so I think there's a bigger possibility of Florida, you know, keeping DJ Lagway, even if Billy Napier is gone, than a lot of analysts think. If I'm Florida, I'm leaning into the future. I think you might have a special quarterback and you want to give him as much opportunity to maximize his talents. Sign me up for DJ Lagway starting against Texas A&M. We said it before this performance. I had my concerns. That, hey, if we see DJ Lagway just play like a true freshman, Maybe you go back to Graham Mertz when he's healthy because you don't want to trot out DJ Lagway against a pass rush like Texas A&M. You didn't see a true freshman on Saturday night. And so my, my opinions over the last a little over 72 hours have changed because I think DJ Lagway obviously looked all, I mean, I, I thought DJ Lagway was going to be good. I didn't know he'd be 18 to 25 for 456 yards good. And so I'm rocking with DJ Lagway. That's my personal opinion. Again, 
I think there's some Florida fans that might disagree with this. Would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. Appreciate y'all rocking with it. If you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.